Welcome to the ELET webinar on the new gradebook and speed grader. Um, this is presented to you by Virginia's, uh, Virginia Community College's ELET, eLearning and Educational Technology Committee. Um, we are pleased to have you with us. My name is Terry Milroy. I'm the coordinator of education technologies at Southside Virginia Community College. In the chat today, we have Paige Durham, the instructional designer from Germana. We have Boris Smith from Germana. We have Aaron Leftwich from Virginia Western. We have Ed McGee from Central Virginia. We have David Todd from the systems office. And if I forgot any of my friends in the chat, I apologize, but there are lots of people to help you. So should you have any questions, please do feel free to post them in the chat. So today we will be covering organizing and arranging your gradebook columns using the individual view to create reports for your course, understanding gradebook and Turnitin status flags, late and missing policy settings, grade posting policy settings, accessing and using the speed grader, and covering a couple of notes on grade weighting and total points calculations. So let's start by talking about organizing and arranging your gradebook columns. So when you are in your gradebook, the second drop down menu uh, across the top is view. And if you click on view, the first thing you come to is arrange by. And you can arrange your gradebook columns um, in a number of different ways by assignment name A to Z or Z to A, due dates oldest to newest or newest to oldest, points possible, lowest to highest or highest to lowest, and modules first to last or last to first. Um, obviously, the module listing is very handy if you rearrange towards the end of the semester because it allows you to bring the most recent things to the front and not have to scroll so far to the right. If you choose to leave your gradebook columns in default order at the top of that menu, that will put the gradebook columns in the order in which you've added items to the course. So if you did not add them um, in module order or in um, any other order that is understandable, they will be kind of jumbled up. You can grab any gradebook column and drag it um, out of order. If you do that, know that everything that is added, once you have dragged and dropped any of your columns, will be added to the far right of your gradebook. Um, so that kind of freezes everything in place and means that any of these orders will not continue uh, once you've dragged and dropped. If you go down one more item, you get uh, the ability to filter your gradebook columns. And you'll see on your screen that there are several different ways to filter. You will not necessarily have all of these options. You will have the option to filter by assignment group. So you can bring up a category all by itself in your gradebook. You will not have grading periods because that is not something we do that's particularly a K-12 function. You will have the ability to, uh, to filter by modules. If your course has multiple sections combined, you will see the sections option in your filters. But if you do not have multiple sections combined, sections will not appear for you. Similarly, if you have created student groups, you will be able to filter by group. But if you have no student groups created, that filter will not appear for you either. Um, you'll also have the ability to filter by statuses, which we'll get to shortly. And note at the bottom under columns, you can check either notes or unpublished assignments to show them so that you either have a personal notes column um, or you have your unpublished assignments showing or not showing. So let me give you a quick visual of all of this. We're in one of my demo gradebooks, and you'll notice here is the view menu. And if I arrange by, I can say um, due date oldest to newest. So if I do that, then that has rearranged things. Notice that up here at the top, I can also um, do some of my filtering. I can do filtering from here um, by assignment groups or modules. I can have either of those or both of those options showing. If I uncheck modules, notice that one of the boxes up here has disappeared and now my filter is by assignment group. And I can go to this box and say, I wanna see everything that is under essays and now only my essays are showing in my gradebook. Okay. I can also, from this view menu, um, I've got a notes column, I can take that away or I can add it back. And if I uncheck unpublished assignments, 
then some of the things in my grade book have disappeared because they are not visible to students right now. Therefore, they are not visible to me right now. Okay, but again, you can um, arrange here. And then once you've arranged, you can filter um, by these, by assignment groups or modules. If you have sections combined, you will also have sections. And if you have student groups created, you will also have student groups here. One other thing, remember that you can, um, we'll get to that in a minute, drag by the gray area and rearrange by dragging and dropping. So I can drag this over here. Okay, let's go back and talk about some other ways to sort. You can sort the student name column. Um, and this gives you the ability to kind of rearrange um, depending upon how you need to find or look for students. So if you sort by, you can sort by name, SIS ID, integration ID, which is Canvas's number, um, login ID, and order um, alphabetically backwards or forwards. You can display the names as first name comma last name or last name comma first name. If you have secondary information added to your gradebook, you can also have that um, displayed. SIS ID, integration ID, login ID, or you can choose none. Um, you can also from this menu show inactive enrollments or concluded enrollments. Okay, inactive enrollments are students who have withdrawn or been withdrawn either for um, lack of payment or because you know, they or you got to a point in the course where they needed to be withdrawn. Concluded enrollments would be when, usually when a course is concluded, but you're going back to look at um, students in that course. So inactive though will still show in your gradebook and as people in your course, um, any students that have withdrawn or been withdrawn during the course of uh, the semester. Okay, you can also filter your gradebook columns themselves. Columns can be sorted by grades, low to high or high to low, by missing, and by late status. And you can message from the column menu um, students in that for that particular assignment. You can set a default grade for that particular assignment, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, you can hide grades, which we'll also talk about, change grades from points to percentages or vice versa. You can download all of the submissions for this particular assignment and you can change the grade posting policy for your course. The one thing in this menu that we are not recommending you ever use is the curve grades option. Because once you curve grades, you cannot uncurve them. That is a permanent change. Um, so we don't recommend you use that setting. But let me show you that also in a live gradebook. So if I go here to the menu by clicking the three dots, which uh, Canvas calls the kebab at the top of my column, I can sort my columns by grades or I can bring missing or late grades to the top. I can message students who haven't submitted yet. Um, so I can say, hey, you know, your work is late. Um, and if I click on this, then every student who has not submitted will appear um, below the box that is uh, circled in blue right now. And each student, only in message students who, but each student will get a BCC message about this. So you don't need to worry uh, about any violations of other students seeing. You can message students who haven't been graded. Um, this is particularly helpful for you. Let's say that um, you're grading 40 essays and you get sick and half the class has been graded and half the class hasn't. You can message all the students who don't have a grade and say, hey, just in case your friends tell you they've got a grade, I got sick, you know, I'm not really up to grading and I want to be as alert as possible and give you good feedback, so I'll get to you shortly. You can message students who scored less than and put a value here in this box. So if I put scored less than a 70, then it's going to bring up every student who scored less than a 70 for this particular assignment. Notice that it has changed the subject um, to reflect the less than grade that I've chosen. And I can message every student that this brings up and say, hey, you didn't do very well on this particular assignment. It's going to be part of your upcoming exam. 
um, I want to recommend that you go back and review this material. You can also message students who scored more than. And this is something that we don't always think about, especially in online courses, because we assume that students who are doing well know that they are doing well. Uh, but it is a fact that students appreciate um, reinforcement um, and positive feedback. So if I put in an 85 for this, notice again, it changed my subject. It would bring up every student who had scored more than an 85. And I could send them all a quick message that said, hey, you did well on this assignment. It was very challenging. I'm super proud of you. Keep up the good work. Also from this menu, I can set a default grade. And this is going to give the same grade to everyone for this assignment. Um, and very quickly, you're going to say, why would I want to do that? Um, perhaps we have a situation where um, we've missed a lot of school, um, like with the current chaos that we're all going through. And maybe this is a very minor assignment and there's so much work for students to make up. Uh, you don't really want them to spend their time on this minor thing, um, but a couple of people had started it and you don't want to not give them a grade at all. So you're just going to give everybody the points for this assignment. Um, so there are a couple of different reasons you might use this, but you can set a grade that everybody gets the same grade for the assignment. Enter grades as points or percentage, download submissions, and I can change the grade posting policy, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay. So we also have the ability to use the gradebook individual view. Um, this is something that not a lot of people use, but it is very helpful, especially um, for a couple of different things. First of all, on the individual view menu, you will see in gray, the checkbox for treat ungraded as zero. Um, instead of having to hunt through all of the cells in your gradebook looking for things that were never turned in and putting a zero in, at the end of the semester, you can go to individual view, check that box, and every cell that does not have a grade will receive a zero. I don't recommend that you do that until the end of the semester because um, that's going to give students a zero for things that may not be due yet. Um, my Children are both in college and they each actually have a professor right now that started out the whole semester with all of Canvas checked, treat ungraded as zero. So they all started out with a zero and as they earn good grades, they're building up to like a 10 for the class and then a 27. Um, and that's very frustrating for them and especially for uh, community college students. So I do not recommend that. You can also from the individual view, download a CSV file of current scores. So at the end of the semester, if you want to keep a copy of your gradebook, you can download that there. Further down the page, there is also a place where you can create a progress report. Um, I don't know how often uh, regular faculty will use this, but I teach dual enrollment and I'm often asked for progress reports for dual enrollment students. So you can select a student and all of their grades will appear and then you can um, screenshot or print out a report. So let me show you that also real quick. So if I go to gradebook here on the far left and I go to individual view, you'll see that if I have sections combined, I can select a specific section. I can also sort this whole page by assignment group or alphabetically or by due date. Um, I can check or uncheck this treat and grade as, as zero. I can I have notes checked in my gradebook, so that is checked here as well. Um, and I can show total points, which I already have checked on my page. But down here, I can select a student, and it's going to show me all of that student's grades for each and every area and assignment that has been given. And I haven't graded anything, so the student has no grades, but um, if I did, I could also choose by every single assignment that I have created. And if a student came in for advising, this is a really good way to show them um, their grades or how they're doing. Okay, so it is time for you all to do something and for me to stop talking for a minute. So if you would go to your sandbox in Canvas or to a concluded course, please do not go to a course that's currently underway. 
Um, arrange your gradebook columns by module. Add the notes column to your gradebook. And if you are in a concluded course, you can sort columns by grades high to low um, or low to high. Um, and then go to individual view and create a progress report again if you're in a concluded course. I'm going to give you three minutes so you have time to play with this. So ready, set, go. Okay, I hope you had time to play around with your gradebook a little bit. We're going to move on and start talking about using gradebook statuses. So when you go into your gradebook, um, if you have due dates set for your assignments and your assessments, what you're going to see after a while is a bunch of different colors appear in your gradebook. Um, now, the colors that you see here are the default colors that Canvas sets. You can change them, but we're going to talk about the statuses as Canvas has the color set. So if you're in your gradebook and you see a red cell, that means that the assignment or assessment is missing. It was due to be done online and it was not submitted by the due date and time. A blue cell means that it was late either um, the item was submitted, but submitted after the due date and time that was put into Canvas, or you as the instructor manually marked the item as late when you went in to put in grades for an on paper assignment. And I'll show you that in a minute. Green means that a student has resubmitted. Uh, this is especially true if you give students um, multiple attempts on quizzes, as soon as they start the second attempt, that cell is going to show as green. 
And beige means excused. And this doesn't mean that they were late and you excuse them for being late. It means that they do not have to complete the assignment. It is as if that um, item does not exist for them in the course. And so they are not technically penalized for anything that they are excused. But for instance, if there are only three items in an assignment group and you excuse them for one, now they only have two grades to average versus three, but it does not penalize them by giving them any, you know, a zero or any points deducted. There are also Turnitin statuses. If you enable Turnitin for a written assignment, what you're going to see in your gradebook next to um, the item, there'll be a little icon here like this one um, that is a little paper. You're going to see different colored flags over to the right hand side of the cell. And there's a quick guide to how those flags work. Blue means that Turnitin detected zero um, items that it think might be plagiarized. Um, and this sounds great, but on the other hand, if this is an assignment of any length with a work cited of any length, um, it might be almost as concerning that there is absolutely no evidence of plagiarism as that there is a significant amount. Um, but blue does mean zero. Green means that less than 25% of the total text in the assignment seems to match anything else um, that is out either in the student paper repository or um, on the World Wide Web. Yellow means that between 25 and 50% of the text matches something else. Orange is between 50 and 75%, and red is over 75%. It is important to note that this just means that there is a match. If you give your students two assignments, and one of them is a rough draft, and one of them is a final draft, there is very likely going to be a high degree of matching between their two assignments. Um, that's why it's good um, to allow them to submit um, to the same place or to the same assignment so that you don't have that duplication. Um, so note that plagiarism may not be present despite what the flags indicate. Um, if you don't carefully eliminate citations, works cited or quoted materials that match sources, um, it is possible that you have um, a higher degree indicated by the flags than is actually present. Um, you will have access to these slides when this presentation is posted to our website, which we will get to. Um, and I do recommend that you look at the status guide for, flag for faculty for Turnitin. But let's look at these real quick um, in the gradebook. So I'm gonna go back to the regular gradebook view. And note that I have a red, uh, cell here because this has not um, been submitted. So if I click on the cell and then click on the little arrow, I'm going to get a pop-up and notice that missing is flagged here because this was not submitted by the due date. If this was an on paper assignment and it was blank, um, but the student had submitted it to me late, I could manually mark this as late. Um, and notice that it has put a number of days in late because there is actually a due date in the system, but you could put in the number of days here manually if you wanted to. Okay, but I'm gonna change that back. I can also excuse this for the student if I want to here. Um, the Turnitin flag here, if I click on it, I'm gonna click on this arrow and go to speed grader. And when I click on this 100% matching, what it's going to take me to, and that's bad, 100% matching is really bad. Um, yeah, I know it's read only. Okay, is the ability to look at all of the sources um, that are matched here. And because I just submitted a part of an online textbook, it is 100% matched. Um, so there is a lot of stuff, but notice that I can go through item by item. Um, and see what is matched, okay? But um, let me also show you very quickly, if I were to go into my course and edit this assignment, I'll show you what, how you can exclude some of this very quickly. 
if you choose online submission type for an assignment where you're going to use Turnitin, you must choose text entry and file uploads in order to be able to submit online. And that gives you the ability to get the Turnitin option for plagiarism. You've only got two options. There's none and there's Turnitin. So if you select Turnitin, you get this big box where you can choose um, what you want to compare uh, student submissions against. But your similarity report is where you can make that percentage in your gradebook smaller. So you can exclude bibliographic materials here, which would be anything that follows the words works cited, references, or bibliography. You can exclude anything in quotes, meaning the student at least tried to indicate that it was borrowed material by including quotation marks, even if a correct citation is not present. And you can exclude small sources. I do this for my class a lot um, because I teach government and a lot of my students um, use court case names or names of legislation. And so rather than have that constantly be highlighted, um, I choose either a number of words strung together or a total percentage of the paper um, for students to be excluded from the Turnitin. So for me, I say five words all strung together. If it's five words or less, it doesn't matter to me. Okay, so that's just a little bit of information about that, just in case that is helpful. All right. So we are going to give you all the opportunity to play with this for a minute. Um, in your sandbox, if you have something submitted as a test student or in a concluded course, go to a cell with a submission, click on the cell, then the arrow, and change the status of that submission. Remember, please don't do this in a course that is currently underway. Um, and if you have any Turnitin submissions, you can click on the colored flag and see the percentage match in SpeedGrader. I'm going to give you two minutes to take a look at this and ready, set, go.
Okay, that's about two minutes. The timer was slow getting started, so we're going to keep going. Um, next, we're going to talk about late policies, missing policies, and grade post policies. So in your grade book, there is a little icon that is the settings icon, and the first tab in the settings is your late policy area. Notice at the top here, it gives you a checkbox to choose to automatically apply a grade for missing submissions. Okay, so you can say that once something goes past the due date, then this is what you want to automatically happen. But understand that uh, Canvas does not give necessarily the number that you put here. It takes the points possible, multiplies it by that percentage, and that is what goes in the gradebook. So if your points possible is 100 and you put a 50 here, then a 50 is um, going to be what goes in there. But um, if your points possible is not a 100, you need to make sure that you understand what this is going to do to your grade. So if you put a 50 here, but your points possible is 50, um, remember that that's going to be different than what you've actually put here in the little box. Down below, you have the ability to check automatically apply a deduction to late submissions. So this would be anything that was submitted after the due date and time for an online assignment or anything that you mark as late for an on paper assignment and check that box manually. So you can multiply a percentage by either every day or every hour, you have a drop down box to choose from with a lowest possible grade of some percentage. So in the example that is here on the screen, if you take 10% off per day with a lowest grade of 50, that means that a student who submits a 100 point assignment five days late, the best they can do is a 50 because 50 points or 50% is going to be deducted um, from their grade automatically by Canvas um, after you grade it. The great thing about these automatic policies is that you don't have to calculate the deduction. If you have this set, then Canvas is going to make the deduction for you automatically. Okay, you also on that same little settings gear have another tab that is grade posting policies. This was new this past fall, um, and it's a little bit um, interesting to work with, but it does give you some options, especially if you are working in a program where it's important to hide student access to certain things. Okay, so Canvas defaults to automatically post grades when entered. That means that when you put feedback in the gradebook or when you enter a grade, it is automatically immediately visible to students. Okay, so you do not have to choose this option if you have never messed with your grade posting policy. Everything will show up automatically if you have never messed with this. However, you can choose to change your grade posting policy to manually post grades. This means that all of your grades and all of your feedback is hidden from students until you post grades for that assignment or you change the whole course policy back to automatically post grades. If manually post grades is your policy, the only thing students will see before you manually post the grades for that assignment is peer review comments if peer review is enabled for that assignment. So you cannot have students be able to access your feedback and not the grade, the two are tied together. All right, so I do want to show you these things in the gradebook so that you know where they are and what they look like. If you go over here to the far right, you see this little gear icon. And when you click on that, this is where you get your policies. Again, I can click here and automatically apply a grade for missing submissions. And I can be really mean um, and give everybody a zero um, for missing submissions. I can also create a late submission policy and I can say, let's deduct 10% um, per day with a lowest possible grade of a 30. So that gives them several days. My nurses do actually use the hour policy, um, but I don't know many faculty who do, that's entirely up to you, but you can do both. Okay, over here on the other side is the grade posting policy. Um, just for the sake of demonstration, I have manually post grades set here. 
Um, and this explains to you that students will not receive new notifications about or be able to see their grade, grade change notifications if you go in and change grades, um, maybe you go in and add extra credit points or something, um, submission comments that you make back to the students, curving assignments, which again, we recommended that you don't use the curve grade, um, or score change notifications. Okay, so none of this is visible until you manually post the grade column. So if I hit update, then that changes um, the course for my students. And let's see what that looks like then. So in the column menu, remember down at the bottom, it says grade posting policy. I can actually change the whole course grade posting policy from there. Um, or if I have grades that are hidden that I want to post, I will have that option in the column. So once I decide to post, I'm going to get a pop-up menu like the right hand picture that you see and it's going to ask me. Um, if I have sections combined, I'm going to be able to toggle and say, I only, oh, down here, sorry, um, if I only want specific sections posted. But I can choose to post everyone's grade or I can only post those who have been graded. So if I'm um, going through and I'm grading 40 essays and I don't want everybody to see theirs, I can say only graded um, assignments should be posted and those who don't have anything aren't going to see that. In the grade book, at the top of the column, any column that is hidden is going to have this eye with the slash through it. That lets you know that the grade posting policy, at least for that column, is set to manual and it is not visible to students. This also means that in the total column, there will be an I with a slash through it because not all grades have been posted and therefore the grade total has not been updated. Okay, what students will see, whoops, let's go back. What students will see in, on their end is the I with the slash through it. And if they hover over the I, this message, instructors working on grades is going to show for them. So one more time, let's go and take a look. Um, let's see what I've got. If I've got anything that's hidden. So from a specific column, I can actually go in here and, well, let's see, I've got to grade something, I guess. Do I have anything that's hidden? Oh, I thought I did, maybe not. Um, okay, I can hide this because there's grade in it. So, whoops, that's interesting. I wonder what happened there. Okay, so let's go back to grades. There we go. All right, let's go back here. So if I click on the three dot menu, um, I can choose to hide grades here. And when I hide, I get this pop out menu. So if I had sections, I could turn specific sections on. That is not the case. Um, because grades are already visible, um, I'm going to only get this ability to choose the whole course and to hide. Oh, wait, I have to turn sections off and hit hide. And we're going to spin here for a minute. And now notice I have the eye with the slash through it at the top of this column, so it is not visible. And if I go all the way over to my total column, there's also an I with a slash through it. Now I can, once I have hidden them, go back and click on the three dots. And now I have the ability to post grades. And I can choose everyone or I can choose only those that are graded. And if I choose only those that are graded and post, then this is going to show because that grade already exists. Okay, and now the eye with the slash through it is gone. All right, so it is your turn again. In your sandbox, if you would, go to the grade book and set either a missing or a late policy or both, and click on the grade post policy tab and set the course policy to manual, or go to a column in your grade book and add a manual posting policy. I'm gonna give you about three minutes to play with this because it's kind of new, and so ready, set, Go.
Okay, we are back. Um, we are going to move on and spend a couple of minutes talking about accessing and using SpeedGrader. I showed you SpeedGrader one way a few minutes ago, and we're going to go back to that first. So if you click in a cell in your gradebook, you're going to get this little arrow that is indicated by the red big arrow um, here on the screen. And when you click on that little black arrow, you're going to get the pop-up that you see over here on the right. And as you can see circled on the pop-up is SpeedGrader. And you can click there and go to SpeedGrader to grade whatever this item is. You can also, of course, um, change any of the statuses or leave a comment about the fact that it was late or missing or whatever before you go to SpeedGrader. When you get to SpeedGrader, if the graded item is an uploaded file of some kind, then you are going to get the annotation tools that you see in gray towards the top of this picture. Um, so there is the ability to flip between pages. There's the ability to download, um, to zoom in and out. Um, then there are point annotators and highlighters, um, the ability to add a text box to strike through. Um, to write with a paintbrush, which is really messy, um, or the little box is the ability to highlight a whole section of text um, and make a comment about that. So we will mention that in a minute, or show you that in a minute. And then of course, over here on the right, you have the box for the grade and the ability to add assignment comments. Um, one thing to note in SpeedGrader, if you aren't very familiar with it, is that the grade saves automatically, kind of like Google, but if you want students to be able to see your assignment comments, you do have to hit the submit button. Um, you will still be able to see them, but they will not. So let's look at that real quick before we keep going to the other ways to access SpeedGrader. So if I were to, let me do a different one because I don't want to do that one. Um, let's see if I go, why will it not let me scroll? Things are not happy today. Well, let's refresh the screen here. There we go. So if I wanted to grade this favorite 80s music item, I could click in the cell, click the little arrow, and then click on speed grader when I hover over it. And I'm back to this thing that we looked at earlier. Here are my annotation tools. Notice that I can zoom in or out if the text is too small or if I'm trying to look at something carefully. Um, I can use a point annotator and I can choose all sorts of pretty colors and I can make a comment over here um, <laughs> if I want. Um, and I can highlight and I can choose a highlight color and I can squiggle across it. Uh, I can type some text in whatever color that I want and whatever size that I want. So I can say uh, this was good. Oops, overall. Um, I can use my paintbrush. Again, I have lots of colors to play with. Um, it is not um, really that easy to do, but it's kind of fun um, if you decide that you want to mess with it. And of course, you do have different uh, stroke sizes. And then here is the group text annotator. So I can take this and I can highlight a whole section of text and then it allows me to leave a comment. Um, so all of those annotation tools are available to you only if the file was uploaded. So if this were a quiz um, or if this was a discussion where the students typed in the discussion box, you're not going to have any of the annotation tools. You will have everything over here on the right, but you will not have any of the annotation tools. While we're here, um, let me also mention the fact that you have three additional options for commenting for students. You have the ability to attach a file, and it does need to be a text file, um, but you have the ability to attach a file. You have the ability to record a quick media comment. So if I hit this button, it's going to allow me to record with my mic and or my webcam um, and record something for my student. So it's a little bit more personal or I can also upload a file. If I've got um, perhaps a video file that I've made 
to comment on um, correct use of citations. And this paper needs that. I can upload that video file. The other thing that you have, only if you are in Chrome as your browser, is this little speaker, which allows you to talk to text. Um, and this is something that would have helped me out a lot um, several years ago. About four years ago, um, I broke my arm, uh, my left arm in two places, and was in a cast from my fingertips um, most of the way up my arm for about eight weeks. So this would have been really helpful to make comments to my students, but we didn't have Canvas and I didn't have that yet. Um, but if either you, you know, are tired of talking or maybe you've got some carpal tunnel going on, or you just like the idea of doing it, you can use the talk to text, but only in Chrome. To get back to the gradebook, um, you will use this little gradebook icon up here at the top. And that takes you back to where we were. Okay, so let's talk about quickly the other ways to access SpeedGrader. Um, when you log in to Canvas, at the right side of your dashboard, you have a to-do list. And if you click on the name of the item in your to-do list, it will take you directly to SpeedGrader for that item. The number next to the name of the assignment tells you how many of those items are waiting to be graded. So in my case, there were four of this week six discussion waited to be graded. Okay, um, so you can access SpeedGrader from there as well. So one last activity, go to any course where you have work submitted to Canvas. Um, again, I don't recommend a course that is underway right now, but if you have a concluded course, that would be great. If you have to-do work listed on your dashboard though, for a current course, click on that and go to SpeedGrader or go to your gradebook and access SpeedGrader with the arrow and the pop out like we showed you. So you've got two minutes to do that and go. Okay, that's about two minutes. The timer stopped, so I was watching my phone. So we hope, hopefully gave you enough time to take a look at that. And now we're going to lastly talk about a few quick notes on grade weighting and total points. So a couple of items to keep in mind as you use the gradebook. When you weight your grades, um, and most people do, not all, I understand that, but if you weight your grades, understand that grades are weighted proportionally, not as a weighted average. Each grade earned is multiplied by the group weight to get the total group percentage. So if you want a true weighted average, 
everything in each assignment group needs to be valued at the same total points possible. So in other words, if you are, um, if you have an assignments category, an assignments assignment group, everything in there needs to be worth the same number of points possible in order to get a true weighted average. Um, otherwise, if you've got some assignments that are worth 100 points and some that are worth 50 points, then what you're going to get is a weighted proportion, not actually a true weighted average. Um, if you want to use total points instead of weighted average for your grades, do not set any group weights in assignments. Um, the groups columns will then display as total points and the total column will as well. So let me just quickly show you, um, in case you're not familiar with weighting your grades, I'm gonna go back to my course. If you go to the assignments area and go to the kebab, the three dots at the top right of the assignments page and click on that, you're going to get assignment groups weight. If I click on that and check this box, now I have a box for every single uh, assignment group that I have created in this course. And if I put my percentages in here, um, and let's see, I've got 75, so I need to, let's see, we'll make this 25, and now let's see, we'll make quizzes 10, and we'll do that, okay? Once I have 100 and I save, now depending upon the assignments in each category, and your assignments page is listed by category, it will show you how much each category is worth based upon your assignment group's weight over here on the right. And if you look at that category, if everything isn't worth the same number of points, then you are not going to get uh, a true weighted average. So like in this quizzes, I've got a, one that's worth one point, I've got one that's worth 100, I've got some that are worth 50, I've got a couple that are worth 10. I am not going to get a true weighted average for this category because my assignments within this group are not worth the same total number of points. Okay, so I just wanted to make that clear to everybody um, that that is the case. Now, if you want to use total points, then you need to uncheck this box so that everything saves as points instead of percentages. Okay. So I hope that was clear. And that is the end of our presentation today. We hope that this has been helpful. If you would take a minute to fill out our survey, we would certainly appreciate your feedback. Not only do we wanna know how we did, but if there are other things that we can do, other trainings that we can provide to help you all, um, then we certainly wanna know that. And we want to thank you all for coming. I'm sure someone has mentioned this in the chat, but the recording and slide deck from this webinar will be available at edtech.dccs.edu forward slash webinars um, within 48 hours or so. We appreciate your patience as we try to get um, clean copies of the recording and the slide deck posted to our website while we are all working from home. So uh, thank you for coming. If you've got any more questions, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, we hope you have a happy Wednesday.